pull out and see what we get, right? <laughs> pull out and see what we get. Pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> A few months ago, we went out to some of our followers and asked them to send us any questions they wanted us to answer. This is Fresh Happenings, Ask Us Anything. Here he is again, our first episode. We finally found a use for it. It doesn't particularly peel eggs, but uh, it does hold questions from you guys quite well. So here they are. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Wow, seamless. So these are the most random assorted questions. Uh, they can be to do with us, to do with the channel, or to do with you guys and things you want help and advice with. If you'd like to get your question in the extractor, throw them in the comments, follow us on the Facebook page, follow us on anything really, Instagram, we to sit, just let us know what questions you want us to ask and we'll put them in the next Ask Us Anything episode. See what's going on here. Okay, here we go. What is the best way to prepare for a first date? What I do to prepare for a first date is, you know, have a nice hot shower. Maybe a bubble bath. A bubble? A bubble bath? That's a lie. Get some nice clothes on, get the perfume going. I'm a basic guy. My main tip was don't over prepare. Obviously, make sure you're clean and looking nice. Don't kind of overthink it, just be yourself. And that's what people want to see. They don't want to see this big charade. Don't set it too high. If you take them to a really expensive restaurant on their first date, the second date, they'll expect the same. Oh, if you yeah. run out of cash, what's the point? Be yourself, stick within your means and if they like you, they'll like you for who you are. I think the best place to go is just to go to a pub for some drinks for two reasons. It's easy to get to know me after eat in front of them and if you're a nervous yeah. eater like that. I'm personally not, but I am a horrendous eater. Also, <laughs> if they are a serial killer, there's plenty of people around and you're not gonna get killed. If it's going horrendously, if you sit down for a meal, you have to stay till the end of the meal and then pay unless you do a runner. With a pub, yeah. it's only what, four pounds around that mark for a drink. If it's going horrifically, you're willing to just leave that drink. It can yeah. be a, mm, this didn't work, and off. We're drinks guys, first dates. Yeah, what have we got? Oh, we're sticking along the date theme. Would you prefer a girl to ask you out or you to ask the girl out? I always ask the girl out, so I think I'd prefer for a girl to ask me out for a change. I think people put too much pressure on the fact they have to be asked out or should they ask them out. If you want to go out, go out with them. Just ask them. Don't wait for them to ask you out because you think it's wrong to ask them. Stop overthinking it. It doesn't matter. I like how you're getting a little bit riled up there and you threw away the paper for dramatic effect. Yeah, it, it really bothers me how people look into this way too much. It doesn't matter. Next one. All right, we're ready for this. How should I approach the bill early on in a relationship? Oh, right, okay, more relationship. <laughs> if you'd have gone for drinks rather than that meal, this wouldn't have even come up. I don't know, how do you approach the bill early on in a relationship? If I've asked them out, I will always have in the back of my mind that it's probably expected that I will pay the bill. But I don't go in going, I am definitely paying the bill. And make sure you've got enough money to pay the best. Don't expect to go 50-50 or them to pay if you ask them out. Mm -hmm. But don't go, don't worry, it's, it's all mine. Unless you really want to. If you've got that sort of spare cash and it's not gonna leave you short that month, be my guest. Don't expect them to pay half if you've asked them out. I always use the, the two chances framework. That I'll explain that very briefly. If they go, no, it's okay, I'll pay it. You're allowed to once go, are you sure? If they repeat it, so the second time, yeah. it's legit. You're allowed to take that. Don't keep having that, are you sure? No, are you sure? Yeah, right, fine. Right, yeah. right, right. Just do two. Let them say it twice. Once they say it twice, leave it there because it just gets awkward. Twice, that's fine. As soon as they say it twice, just take it. Good way to get a second date is if they pay that bill, just say, oh, it's okay, I'll pay the next one then. Bang, guarantee the second date. Everybody's a winner. Everyone's Everyone's a winner, a winner baby, yeah, that's for sure. sure. You're oh, in the got, No, I've got the words there. <laughs> <laughs> next one. What is the most effective contraception? Not having sex, done. All right, you ready for this? Is getting back with an ex always a bad thing? No, not necessarily. Depends how bad the breakup was or like what kind of person that person is. It depends on if the previous relationship was healthy or not. It completely depends on the situation. If you want to ask us next time about a specific uh, situation, let us know in the comments or on any of the other gump I told you about before. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Ooh, workplace romance. A good idea. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Generally, no. I, I'm going to talk from experience and say no. It becomes a bit of a situation where 
It can easily happen, can't it, right? Where you're spending time with these people all the time. So that's where these relationships build It's something from. to bear in mind. The people you work with, if you work a nine to five, you'll probably spend more time with them than you do your actual partner outside of work in some cases. It's all very much fun, isn't it, in the beginning, but in my experience, and you know what, to be fair, this probably isn't the case all around, but in my experience with it, and through other people who've also, I've also seen this, you know, them being that kind of situation, it just never ends in a good way. And the, the problem is you've got to, and you've got to work with that person after on a, in a professional capacity, and it just makes things super awkward, super, super awkward. I'll get to the bottom and they're all clumped. How can I get girls to talk to me on Tinder? This is probably more your scene than mine. I can tell some Tinder, some Tinder tips. Tinder is like, it is a weird beast. In my experience with, with talking um, to girls on Tinder, you've got to make yourself stand out from the pack. It is unfortunately an application which is based on looks. Yes, what we want to do, we want to swipe the left, we want to swipe the right, and that's it, isn't it? So what I always had was I always made sure that I had like a, a there was like a picture of me and my face, there was a picture, like a full body shot of me. I'm not hiding anything, you know, yeah. they can see exactly who I'm at, you know, I'm not a fitty. Well, it, that, that was the comment I was going to make, that it, that is probably the easiest way to do it, because it's better to have people say no, but know exactly what they're getting than people For say sure. yes, and then you've you've got yourself into that situation and you've lied. It's never gonna work. If you want something to work, be open and honest from the start. I wouldn't ever want to trick anyone who would swipe yes on me and you know they went on a date with me and then they were really disappointed. Yeah, it's know? not gonna work. Like, like, what, what is the end goal of that? Yes, you've got that date, but it's never gonna work because you've lied. There's, yeah. there's no point in it. You're wasting everyone's time. Final question of our first Ask Us Anything. Ooh. How do you manage a doozy? A doozy. <laughs> How do you manage two boyfriends? Uh, I don't. Yeah. Okay. But in a hypothetical situation <laughs> yeah. where you do have two boyfriends, right? <laughs> How would I manage? How them? would you manage them? First of all, let's talk about the the ethics of this. Like, when is this ethically okay? There may be some uh, guys out there who don't mind this. So our producer Jeff has just let us know that one in five under 25 year olds in America are in non-monogamous relationships. So they might be happy to they, they, share. They call those a triad. <laughs> Triads. But let's, for the sake of the debate, the two boyfriends or the two girlfriends are not aware of each other. What What is the ethics of that? Do you think that's ethically it, it, okay? No, it, it is wrong. Don't, don't, don't lie about it. It's never going to fully work out if your relationships are built on lies. Managing two, you're just putting pressure on yourself. Like, just pick. You don't go to bed in two sets of pyjamas. You, you, you manage to pick which one is better for that situation. Yeah, yeah. Do the same. There can be relationships that you know, you might already be in one and then another relationship might uh, might form anyway and you're kind of like dating somebody else like that. Really, you've got to look at it in the aspect of like, you know, really should I be with a person that I, you know, I started with or should I be with this new person? If so, it's unfair to everyone involved, isn't it? So you just got to call that quits and settle on one. Yeah, just settle on one. Like I said, you don't wear two pairs of pyjamas. Unless you're a triad. Or a quad. <laughs> so this has been our first Ask Us Anything with our guest, uh, The Extractor. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Do you enjoy it? It's fun. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope you actually took something from it. I think I'd like to see more varied questions that aren't just relationship and sex questions. Yes, yeah, don't, don't feel bad about asking us a relationship or sex question, but if you've got literally any question for us, let us know. This has been Fresh Happenings. Have a lovely rest of your week. Until we see you again on the next episode. Bye! That was really, that was really enjoyable, wasn't it?